Mature elm trees like these are a beautiful sight in Alberta and British Columbia. But in other provinces and countries, a street like this is only a memory. You see, Alberta and British Columbia are home to the largest stands of elm trees that remain untouched by Dutch elm disease in the world. These trees are worth more than a billion dollars, and their environmental and aesthetic values are immeasurable. I'm Sue Ellen Fast. As a Canadian naturalist, I'm concerned about the survival of our magnificent elms. That's why, over the next half hour, I'll be talking about the value of these trees and what Dutch elm disease is and the threat it poses, its history, symptoms, control measures, and what you can do to help. The American elm is a high-quality shade tree you'll find in Alberta and British Columbia. This non-native species has been planted throughout these provinces for over a hundred years. When fully grown, it can tower to 30 meters. Its form looks like an umbrella or a mushroom with a broad crown and descending branches. The bark is gray, flaky, rough and furrowed when it matures. The leaves are dark green with distinct veins. An elm leaf also has a double tooth margin and grows unequally at its base. Aesthetically, elms are one of the most attractive features of cities, towns and rural landscapes. Environmentally, they're invaluable, providing wildlife habitat, producing oxygen and removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, thereby lessening the greenhouse effect. They provide shade, they beautify our streets and yards, and they increase property values in a number of ways. Imagine this street without elms. As you can see, the loss would be devastating. As well as destroying a great deal of the attractiveness, the absence of trees would also elevate temperatures. These large deciduous trees can cool a street like this by up to 20% on a hot summer's day, or provide a welcome windbreak on brisk winter nights. Fast-growing, drought-resistant, and cold-tolerant elms play a vital role in our communities. Unfortunately, we're in danger of losing this precious asset to Dutch elm disease. About 90% of North America's elm-populated areas have been infected by Dutch elm disease. And in many states and provinces, elm trees have virtually disappeared from the landscape. But what exactly is Dutch elm disease? Dutch elm disease is a fungus that inhibits the movement of water through the tree. As a result, the elm wilts and eventually dies. Infected elms can die in as little as three weeks, but have been known to survive for up to two years. Under normal conditions, the elm tree will die within about three months. The disease can be spread by elm bark beetles or, in cases where the trees are growing close together, by contact in the roots. In one sad instance, an infected pair of shears spread the disease from tree to tree because an arborist had neglected to disinfect the tool after pruning an infected tree. In Alberta and British Columbia, it's the smaller European elm bark beetle which has been found. This tiny insect is not normally harmful to the elm tree it inhabits. The beetles are attracted to trees with open wounds or broken branches or ones that are under stress. And in early to mid-June, the female will begin to form brood galleries under the inner bark of dead wood on elm trees or logs. And it's there that she can first come into contact with the sticky spores of the Dutch elm disease fungus. In the gallery, the adult deposits approximately 40 eggs which hatch into larvae and overwinter in this form. The larvae eventually pupate within the gallery and new adults emerge. These beetles fly to healthy elms to feed, thereby continuing the spread of the disease. In other provinces and states where elms grow naturally, it's the native elm bark beetle that carries the disease. Unlike the European species, this beetle overwinters as an adult at the base of living elm trees. 
it deposits its eggs under the inner bark of the tree. In early summer, new adults emerge and fly up to the canopy of the overwintering tree or to nearby healthy elms. In late summer and early fall, the beetles begin the deadly cycle again. Dutch elm disease is one of the most virulent tree diseases of this century, but not to Asian elms, leading scientists to believe Asia is where Dutch elm disease originated. Having coexisted with the disease for generations, the Asian elms have undergone their own form of natural selection, as susceptible elms have died and seedlings with greater resistance have survived. The disease only reached epidemic proportions when it was somehow transported to Europe. With no previous exposure to the fungus, millions of elms were lost. Finally, around 1917, a botanist in Holland identified the pathogen and named the killer Dutch elm disease. Despite the discovery, the fungus continued to spread and by 1927 had found its way to England. Through international trade, Dutch elm disease was accidentally introduced to the United States around 1930. The first case, was found in Cleveland, Ohio. Destruction throughout the country was great, with the disease moving steadily westward wherever elm trees grew, naturally or in cultivation. Cities that ignored the problem suffered the largest losses. Typical examples were Chicago, Illinois, with 119,000 trees decimated in three years, and Des Moines, Iowa, with a quarter of a million gone in just six years. The disease killed approximately 43 million of the close to 77 million elms growing in the United States. That's more than half the elm trees lost. Dutch elm disease reached Canada in 1944. Starting in the province of Quebec, it cut a devastating path through Ontario in 1946, Manitoba in 1975, and finally Saskatchewan. There, it has been held at bay since 1981, just 150 kilometers from the Alberta border. No evidence of the disease has been found in Alberta or British Columbia to date. However, European elm bark beetles were first discovered in Kamloops and throughout the interior of British Columbia in 1979 and in Alberta in 1994. Specimens have been located in Edmonton, Calgary, St. Albert and Vauxhall. Typically, the beetles get established first and then the disease follows, so there's cause for genuine concern. Until there's a cure, prevention remains the most effective means of control. To prevent Dutch elm disease, it's important to identify and report any elm that appears to be afflicted. To do this, you need to be able to recognize the symptoms, so here's what to look for. Starting in about mid-June, leaves on branches in the upper crown begin wilting. By late June or July, leaves will curl, shrivel, and turn brown. By mid-August, this becomes difficult to distinguish from normal autumn coloring. As well, it's not unusual to have brown curled leaves remaining on infected branches well into the winter months. Trees that are infected late in the season may grow small, sparse leaves that fall quickly in the spring. So watch for this sign as well. Not all elms that display these symptoms have Dutch elm disease, but it's important to take action when you see any of the symptoms. Call the Dutch elm disease hotline or the forestry office in your area. Inspectors will remove a branch from the tree. This branch will be taken to a laboratory for analysis to determine if the Dutch elm disease fungus is present. A brown stain in the sapwood indicates the possible presence of Dutch elm disease. A cross section of the tree's stem will show this as a dark brown ring. If the disease is found, control measures will be taken immediately. The affected tree is usually destroyed and surrounding trees are tested and removed if necessary. Although these steps are severe, the aftermath of an epidemic is far worse. At present, a strong offense is the best defense against Dutch elm disease. 
the only way to prevent it from affecting Alberta or British Columbia, and to stop further outbreaks in other provinces, is through strong control measures. Now, management programs require a substantial amount of money. In Alberta, over a million dollars is spent each year to prevent Dutch Elm disease. And although that sounds like a lot, it's only one-tenth of one percent of the total value of Alberta's residential elms. In other places where programs were interrupted by lack of sufficient funding, the Dutch elm disease problem exploded, resulting in a drastic increase in costs. Tens of millions of dollars had to be spent on tree removals alone, and nearly all the elms were lost. Compare the cities of Winnipeg and Great Falls. In 1975, Dutch elm disease was first recorded in Manitoba, but due to a vigilant prevention program, the province was able to keep its elm casualties down. From 75 to 91, Winnipeg lost a low 9%, or 24,000 trees to the disease. On the other hand, Great Falls, Montana lost 84% of its elm population. This is the result of a seven-year delay from the time the disease was first discovered until a control program was instituted. Since 1987, the city of Great Falls has lost 10,000 American elm trees to Dutch elm disease out of a beginning population of 14,000. Those 10,000 trees were worth $50 million to our community, and we spent $7 million removing those trees. During the same time frame, we could have spent only $1 million in controlling Dutch elm disease. Alberta and British Columbia may have a couple of advantages when it comes to warding off the disease. Elms are not native to either province. All of the elms have been planted, so none are growing wild in river valleys and rural areas. This will make it easier to contain the disease if it strikes. But the highest priority is preventing Dutch elm disease from crossing the border into Alberta. Toward this end, a volunteer organization has been established to promote awareness of the disease. The Society to Prevent Dutch Elm Disease, Stop Dead, is pursuing an aggressive prevention strategy to minimize elm losses should the disease gain a foothold in Alberta. This vigilant group, comprised of tree experts and enthusiasts, has been instrumental in conveying the importance of control to the community. There are many nonprofit organizations like Stop Dead in Canada and the United States. Their purpose is to raise public awareness and to participate in control measures, form a strong base to work with government, and to raise funds for ongoing research being conducted at universities. Some of these groups have also received some help from friends. In Edmonton, Alberta, two schoolgirls, Dina and Michelle, were so moved by the threat of the disease they went from door to door to spread the word. Their enthusiasm was contagious and the duo ended up raising funds which they presented to the city. Dutch elm disease is formidable, but fortunately we have the resources and the information that will help us control it. Public participation and Dutch elm disease organizations and the latest technologies and the experiences of other jurisdictions will all go a long way towards a solution.